This 17th Sunday of the ordinary time of the church here marks the halfway point of ordinary time. 17 weeks from now, it will conclude with the Feast of Christ the King, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Every three years, something unusual happens on this Sunday, and that is that the Gospel of Mark, which we have been hearing for the past 14 weeks, is suddenly interrupted, and we hear today, and for the next four weeks, passages from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Actually, this year it will be only for three out of the next four Sundays because on August 15th we will celebrate the Feast of the Assumption of Mary with its own gospel from Luke. But we might ask, why this sudden shift from Mark to John's gospel? If we had stayed with Mark, we would have heard the story of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes and the feeding of the 5,000, the same miracle story that we have just heard from John. In fact, it is the only miracle of Jesus that is contained in all four of the Gospels. However, while the three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, contain this miracle story of the feeding of the multitudes, they immediately move on to Jesus continuing his ministry. John, on the other hand, gives us an extended reflection on the meaning of this miracle, which scripture scholars point out is actually an explanation of the Eucharist. If you recall on Holy Thursday, when we remember the Last Supper Jesus shared with his disciples, we hear in our second reading at that Mass, St. Paul describing in his first letter to the Corinthians what is called the institution narrative. Jesus taking the bread, blessing it, sharing it, and telling his friends, do this in memory of me. He then does this with the cup of wine, saying, it is the cup of his blood. Now, John's gospel, while going into great detail about this Passover meal, especially what Jesus talked and prayed about, does not have the actual words of the institution narrative or the actions of Jesus sharing the bread and the cup. Instead, John is the only evangelist who tells us about Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. Again, scripture scholars point out that John does not omit Jesus giving us the sacrament of the Eucharist, but rather he transfers his teaching on it to this miracle of the feeding of the multitudes and Jesus' extended bread of life discourse, which we will hear over the next few weeks. The parable, parallels between the miracle that Elisha worked in the first reading and Jesus in the gospel works are obvious. Elisha feeds 100 with 20 barley loaves, and Jesus feeds 5,000 with five barley loaves and two fish. In both instances, people protest, what good are these for so many? Because they're fixated on the enormity of the need and the scarcity of the resources. Finally, after each meal, they gather up fragments and the remains are significant, showing that God gives more than what is needed. God gives graciously. God gives abundantly. Both these readings urge people to take extraordinary actions to meet an urgent need. Jesus' ability to do what Elisha did points to his identity as the prophet that Moses promised to God's people. Jesus takes the barley loaves, gives thanks, distributes them, and does the same with the fish. The Eucharistic allusions are obvious. The distinctive features of this Johannine account include the characterization of Jesus' action as what John calls a sign and the identification of him as a prophet. A sign points to something else. The description of the way in which Jesus acts points towards the church's celebration of the Lord's Supper and ultimately toward the eternal banquet celebrated in God's kingdom. By the time John's gospel was written down, the Eucharist had already become the central prayer and worship rite of the Christians. No doubt, the previous miracle of the wedding feast at Cana, again, the only recorded by John, and this one on the mountainside by the Sea of Galilee would have Eucharistic overtones for the early Christians. In each case, 
Jesus provided bread and wine in a miraculous manner for the crowds, just as he would continue to do for them and for us through the ages. These miracles also teach us that God works through ordinary people. Elisha's servant and Jesus' disciples distribute the bread provided by God. It means God meets the needs of people through the service provided by members of the community. The Eucharist is the sacrament of ongoing union with God and with our fellow Christians. Today's second reading from the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians reminds us that we have been made one in Christ, and therefore we should live in a way that befits our corporate identity. Narrow individualism can sometimes blind us to the fact that we are first and foremost members of a people. The sharing of the broken bread is a sign of a community that is expected to share and provide in abundance for the needs of its members and beyond that, for the needs of the world. And the needs of the world are so great, they can be overwhelming. No one can do it all, but everyone can do something. When Mother Teresa went to serve the slum dwellers of Calcutta, she had only 20 cents in her pocket. But God can do so much with so very little. The God who fed the crowds for Elisha and Jesus was with Mother Teresa. When she died, 49 years later, God had turned those original 20 cents into 80 schools, 300 mobile dispensaries, 70 leprosy hospitals, 30 homes for the dying, 30 homes for abandoned children, and 40,000 volunteers from all over the world. We're accustomed to dealing with the world as a rather flat, self-evident sort of place, where things happen predictably, and where we're, where we're able to comprehend all things solely on our own with the limited power of our own intellect. The miracle stories we have heard today invite us to look beyond what we think we see and what we think we know, and to see that which, without the aid of grace, would remain unseen. We are called to look beyond the bread to see Jesus, the bread of life. Then having been fed by Jesus, we are called to look beyond Jesus to see the world where he sends us to feed our sisters and brothers.